Yes, I bestowed a night of blissful dreams on him. A whole night? Mm-hmm. He seemed quite satisfied with the arrangement. I worked hard, so I'm pleased with myself. Mau Mau is back home for a well-deserved break. Or so she thinks, because when she wakes up after her first night home, a child comes to her door, and Mau Mau is summoned to a brothel to deal with a double poisoning incident. A courtesan and a well-dressed customer have fallen victim to what initially seems to be a double suicide attempt. Mau Mau manages to successfully counteract the poison and save both individuals. However, as she investigates further, she uncovers the true nature of the incident. The poisoning turns out to be an attempted murder, orchestrated by the courtesan against a wealthy merchant's son, the well-dressed customer. The complex web of deceit involves personal vendettas and a history of trickery by the customer against courtesans in the red light district. Mao Mao deciphers the motives behind the poisoning and realizes that her intervention not only saved lives, but also spared the brothel from public disgrace. Upon her return to the palace, she is met with a visibly agitated Jinshi, who has been eagerly awaiting her return. However, misunderstandings arise, fueled by Mao Mao's choice of words regarding Li Haku, leading to a shocked reaction from Jinshi and amusement from Lady Gyokyo and her ladies in waiting. Apothecary Diaries Episode 8 invites us into the fascinating world of the Pleasure District, delving beyond the opulent facade of beautiful courtesans to uncover a realm of intrigues, poisoning incidents, and clandestine activities all unfolding behind the scenes. What for me made this episode particularly intriguing was Mao Mao's ability to unravel the mystery even after the fact. First, how she was able to deduce many things about the case at a glance, the meticulous way she analyzed the scene and decoded the situation, all showcase her prowess. Yet, for the first time, we see that, for all her brilliance, she still has a lot more to learn and grow, as evidenced by how her father, in his own quiet way, gently nudged her so she could form the right conclusions about the case they had on hand. Mao Mao's father, by the way, is basically a genius. Or at least, he's really, really good at his job, for he instantly understood what had gone down long before Mao Mao connected the dots herself, which explains why he had at first declined the madame's money. He recognized it for what it was, bribery. The episode raises intriguing questions about the involvement of the madame and the other girls in the house, leaving viewers in suspense about the aftermath. However, in this complex world, the concepts of right and wrong are not as straightforward as we'd like to think. In fact, the show delves into the harsh realities of the women in the Pleasure District, drawing parallels between their struggles and those in the rear palace. Yet the show takes the time to highlight their resilience and agency, portraying them not as mere victims, but as individuals capable of making choices in the face of adversity. Now, as to the moral question of whether the choices these women made were right or wrong, well, that is left to us all to answer. The nuanced portrayal of individuals in the red light district is a rare and commendable aspect of the story. It presents those in the world's oldest profession as multifaceted individuals with their own hopes, wishes, and ambitions. A particularly poignant moment in this episode is when the courtesan, whom Mao Mao helped save, is depicting gazing at the red sky while quietly humming to herself. The visual direction effectively captures the trapped songbird essence that is her life and almost makes you forget that she came really close to killing a man. But let us not forget, children, murder is bad. However, Mao Mao, who is a denizen of this world, displays understanding and perhaps hints at her own complex background when she refrains from passing judgment, choosing to remain uninvolved because that is the best way to stay alive in this world of hers. Back in the palace, we get one of the most hilarious scenes yet, a 
as Mao Mao's phrasing gives way to a terrible misunderstanding which results in Jinshi's suffering. I really enjoy everyone's reactions to this, especially Gyokyo, who appears to relish the unfolding comedy. It must be especially satisfying for her to see Jinshi grapple with the same emotional entanglements he expertly navigates in his role as Honey Trap in the Rear Palace. <laughs> Time for some payback, Jinshi. Also, the chibi moments were especially delightful and perfectly mirrored their four comas in the manga, which I highly encourage you to check out. Speaking of the manga, let's talk about the extras from the original source material. This episode covered chapter 23 and 24 of the first volume of the light novel, as well as parts of chapter 11 to 13 in manga volume 3. Again, the anime is being extremely faithful to the light novel and is adapting the manga almost panel by panel. It really is that faithful. And thank goodness too, because Ponytail Mau Mau is peak Mau Mau, in my humble opinion. The look just suits her really, really well. However, there was one significant detail in the light novel that I did wonder at, and which was entirely skipped. And that is the fact that in this chapter, the light novel actually says that Mau Mau's father is actually The absence of information about her biological mother, coupled with her childhood connections to Verdigree House, adds an extra layer of mystery. The additional detail from the light novel about the man involved in the quote-unquote double suicide, specifying that the man would likely face a ban not just from the specific brothel but from the entire district, adds a satisfying conclusion to the consequences of his actions. It serves as a fitting repercussion for his deceitful and harmful behavior, offering a sense of justice within the context of the story. As to anime-only scenes, the bathhouse scene with Mei Mei is anime only. Mei Mei asks Mao Mao if she's gone to the annex, and the scene cuts to a darkened room, which I assume is the aforementioned annex. Inside, there's a sick woman lying in bed, with Mao Mao present, but off in a corner, observing without making an approach. Odd. This addition serves to introduce viewers to a new mystery that might unfold in the future. I can't wait for more mysteries to unravel and see what the next episode holds. I'm sure, like always, it'll offer new tidbits of information for us to piece together and keep us guessing and trying to solve the intriguing mystery of the identities of our main leads. Feel free to share your guesses in the comments, but of course, please no spoilers. Let's keep this a safe zone for all anime-only viewers. It's challenging to navigate social media without stumbling upon major spoilers, so let's make this a spoiler-free haven for everyone. Again, thank you to all my supporters. If you'd like to join my little magpie tribe, visit my Ko-fi page and become a member. Thanks for watching. Until the next time, bye-bye.